Hello, welcome, greetings and salutations. My name is Kerim Aroğlu and I am here to explain quadratic functions and their real-life applications. Now without any interruption, let's get to the introduction. To be completely honest, quadratic functions are not really seen as useful among high school students. They are more of that thing I learned in school for no reason and I will probably never use again. But I am here to prove otherwise. Although I can't do so without showing what a quadratic function really is. In the most brief sense, the function f of x, which is a quadratic function, can be written down as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is a constant. The result of this function or equation is always the shape called a parabola, which can be drawn as such. The parabola is always of the U shape. In any quadratic function, A could either be one of two things, positive or negative. If A is greater than zero, or A is positive, the graph would be an upwards U shape. But it could also be negative, so A less than zero, so A is negative. The graph looks like this, so it's an upside down U. As previously mentioned, A could either be positive or negative. And in both cases, the point where the function turns, as seen, is called the vertex. Where A is positive, the vertex is the minimum, or where the Y value is the very least. But where A is negative, the vertex is the maximum point. So it is where Y value is the very highest. So if you have to take the coordinates of this point as H and K, K is the minimum value, and where A is negative, if we do the same thing and give it HK, K is the maximum value. As previously stated, the coordinates of the vertex could be written down as h, k, h being the x value and k being the y value, either the minimum or the maximum. The value of h could be given as minus b over 2a, which could be proven from the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus or minus, because it has two roots, a double root or a complex number root, the square root, b squared, minus 4ac over 2a. However, in this video, I will not be going into how uh, the h value is derived. Furthermore, to find the k value, which is the, either the minimum or the maximum value of the parabola, depending on if a, the coefficient of x squared, is negative or positive, could be found by placing h into the function of f, or the function at hand. Quadratic function graphs also have an element called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the line that passes straight through the parabola, also the vertex. Because the axis of symmetry passes right through the vertex, we can take the x value of our vertex, which is h, and make it equal to x in order to find the function that gives us the axis of symmetry. So then again, this function gives us the axis of symmetry. But now it's time to take a look at some of the applications of quadratic functions. Now the most obvious application of quadratic functions is trajectory, or for example in the most simple example, throwing a ball. In this question, it is asked that we find the maximum height attained by the ball that is going at 40 feet per second up, and its height in feet after t seconds is given by the quadratic function y equals 40t minus 16t squared. So this is the same as the quadratic function formula that we looked at earlier, which is a squared plus bx plus c. But the only difference here is that it's minus 16t squared, or x squared, if you will plus 40t, and there's nothing else, so there is no c. In this question, the ball is going straight up, so if we take the maximum point 
and then, as we know it's going to come down if we give it a displacement time graph ball would go up and then back down I know I can hit it but ignorable that would be the vertex which we gave as hk from earlier we could say that h equals minus p over 2a and in this case h equals minus 40 over 2 times minus 16 so it would be minus 40 over minus 32 which also equals to 5 over 4 and simplified and because we're looking for h and h is the vertex or the x value of the vertex remember that k equaled y I mean the equation of y which is this equation if we take it as y h so in that case all we do is put h into the r equation 40 5 over 4 minus 16 5 over 4 squared when solved this equation would look like this the 40 times 5 over 4 would be 50 minus this part would be 25 so also that would be equal to 25 feet so in this question we use the vertex of a parabola with a which is negative as you can see 16 is negative so the a is also negative so the vertex is the maximum point also the maximum height reached by the ball Agricultural calculations is a rather unexpected application of quadratic functions, but this question helps to show it. It says that the number of apples produced by each tree in an apple orchard depends on how densely the trees are planted. If n trees are planted on an acre of land, then each tree produces 900 mi minus 90 n apples. So the number of apples produced per acre is this equation right here. Because it doesn't really look like our regular quadratic function, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, we would need to turn it into one. So we can take n and put it into both, so basically expand it, which would give out 900n minus 9n squared. And to make it look even more like our classical equation, we can turn it into minus 9n squared plus n. So in this case, a is minus 9, b is 900, and again we have no c. And the question asks, how many trees should be planted per acre to obtain the maximum yield of apples? In this question, n are the number of trees. And again, as earlier, this graph could be drawn like such, if we put apples to density of trees. We can draw it like such, where the vertex is the maximum, and we can again write it down as h to k. Of course we can finish it off, but it's unnecessary. And in this representation of h k, h is the number of apple trees, while k is the number of apples. In this case, all we need to do is find h, and the equation for h was minus b over 2a. In this case, h would be equal to minus 900 over 2 times minus 9, which is also equal to minus 900 over minus 18. And when solved, that equals to 50. So we need 50 trees to get the maximum amount of apples. Another unexpected use of quadratic functions is economics. For example, in this question, a soft drink vendor at a popular beach analyzes his sales records and finds that if he sells X cans in one day, his profit in dollars is given by the equation Px equals minus 0.001x squared plus 3x minus 1800. And is asked, what is the maximum profit per day and how many cans must he sell? So the function is exactly like the one that we looked before, which is Ax squared plus b x plus c and we have all of them a is minus 0 0.001 b is 3 and c is minus 1800 
Instead of finding the maximum profit per day, I'm first going to find the amount of cans needed. We can draw this graph like so. We can give our maximum point or our vertex h to k as we did before. In order to find h, the amount of cans needed for maximum profit, we did minus b over 2a. So in this case, that is minus 3 over minus 0.002, which equals to 1500 cans. And in order to find k, which is the maximum profit, we need to take h and put it into the function p. So that gives us minus 0.001 1500 squared plus 3 times 1500 minus 1800. And when solved, this would give 2250, this would give 4500 and minus 1800. And this would all be equal to four hundred and fifty dollars. Those were only two of the many applications of quadratic functions. Other real-life applications of quadratic functions include trajectory and physics such as ball throws, arrows and missiles, economics like profit maximization, sales, advertising and revenue, certain area-related builds such as rain gutters and horse corals, and even pharmaceuticals, for example measuring how effective a certain drug is when concentrated in blood. I hope I've been able to convince all of you that quadratic functions aren't just something that you learn in school and that they are very useful when grades aren't everything.